And I have some messages that are heavier in scripture, some mes messages that are heavier in, in the evidence to defend scripture, and I think both are important. Because if you just hand somebody a book and say, well, here, believe this book, well, why not? It, it, it could be the Koran. But now, the reason the Bible is believable is because it's, you can sub substantiate it. It's true historically, it's true geographically, it's true prophetically, which is the Bible's own internal test. Uh, it's true scientifically, and you can show all these things to show, if, you could, if the Bible wasn't true in all these ways, why would we even bother with it? If it was a book, you know, there would be like fairy tales. But if you can, and that's the reason most, seven out of ten children that start in a church drop out of church before they finish high school. Seven out of ten. That's tragic. And the reason, the number one reason by far, is they do not believe the Bible is relevant. It's just a religious book. They don't believe it's true historically, archaeologically, scientifically, because everywhere, everywhere else they go, it's taught against. And so they think it's just another religious book like the Koran or the Book of Mormon or the Tripitakas or the Bhagavad Gita and all these things. It's just another religious book. But it's not. The Bible can be substantiated. It mentions real people, real places, real events, real battles, real cities, all those genealogies that are so boring to read through. But that gives the Bible proof that these people really existed. They really lived when the Bible said, where the Bible said, at the time the Bible said, in the places the Bible said. So you can show this book's reliable. Speaking of Bible, I keep, I keep my Bible in my car. That way I always have it. And I actually have a backup Bible I keep in the trunk. So that way I always have a Bible. We just got a new vehicle. <laughs> and I took a different vehicle here today. So my Bibles are waiting for me in the car. <laughs> and so fortunately, I have the Bible on my phone if I need it. And when I use scripture, I put it up on the, on the slides. I don't have it memorized, but you know, I, I know it well, you know, reasonably well. <laughs> so anyway. So this message will not have a whole lot of scripture, but this message will substantiate scripture. And that's kind of my goal, is to help a church. You can preach the most wonderful message in the world, and if the person doesn't have a biblical foundation, if he doesn't believe the Bible's true, so what? It just goes right through them. But now if they, if they respect the Bible, if they know, hey, there's something to this book, it's, it can be proven that other, where other religious books can't. I've read, I've read the, most of the Book of Mormon and the Koran and uh, the Bhagavad Gita. If you, if you can't sleep at night, read Bhagavad Gita. It says a bunch of words that mean nothing. And I remember reading several pages and I got done thinking, what was that? I, j I just read for a half hour and I didn't read anything. And at the end it, it said something about uh, become one with yourself. I, I, I kind of thought that's what I was. I, 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 how can you be one? What, what's that mean, be one with yourself? It was in there somewhere. And uh, the, the only one that makes sense is the Koran, and that's dangerous. So <laughs> it's not good. Um, so we'll uh, have a message on, uh, I call it fresher fossils. I used to call it fresh fossils, but they found a couple fresher ones. And so I added them to it. And it's some amazing things that show, I, I, I try and give stuff that proves the things in the Bible that most people doubt. The creation, the flood, uh, Jonah and the whale, uh, David and Goliath, all these things that people say, well, that's just myths and fairy tales and stories. No, those things happened and there's evidence that they happened. And that's what we kind of look at. And so today is gonna be on fresher fossils. Okay, to, to move that one just in time. And I actually have, I have, I have several dinosaur bones. I have a rock that looks a lot like that. Um, I think I, have, I actually have a picture of it coming up later on of a Triceratops backbone. And I also have uh, Triceratops uh, hoods and uh, uh, horn bone, you know, bone from the horns. And they're finding soft tissues in those bones. And we'll get to that later. I don't want to give away the rest of my message, so go ahead, next. Um, you know, people are sometimes scared of dinosaurs. The devil has used them. Next, I think the next one's got. It's used for evolutionary propaganda. And anytime you see a dinosaur, the th things that come to people's mind are evolution and millions of years ago. And it's just not true in either case. Th they don't prove evolution and they did not exist millions of years ago. The songbook's a good illustration. Um, and I, I don't have one, but you can look at the one up there. And, uh, 
you could take a look at a songbook, and this is the way evolutionists honestly look at it, and uh, I, I think I have some quotes coming up in this message that will substantiate that, that uh, if you look at a songbook, and it, you open it up and it says, uh, printed 1956, the scientist would say, wow, how, how could that be? It went extinct you know, 65 million years ago. They will not give up. You look up songs written by Fanny Crosby and John Peterson and uh, Charles Wesley, and you know when they lived in the era. Wow, it's amazing that those guys wrote songs 65 million years ago. And you go, no, they didn't. Uh, you know, you look at the, the original, you look at, oh, 1956 was the original, this is the 1978 printing. Amazing, how could they do that 65 million years ago? And that's the way they look at dinosaurs. You show them proof that these bones can't be that, that old, and they'll just say, wow, it's amazing that that could happen 65 million years ago. No, it didn't. And we'll look at that coming up next. And uh, so there's nothing to fear from dinosaurs. They're just big lizards. Okay, we got big mammals. We got big fish, whales. Uh, we got some, we've got some big lizards. Uh, dinosaur, before the flood, we had a different atmosphere, we had a different, different conditions, different temperature, different climate. Things lived longer, they ate better, they were healthier, they breathed better. Uh, the oxygen was probably more concentrated and more abundant. And so things healed faster, grew bigger, lived longer. If, matter of fact, Neanderthal man, uh, the, the latest studies show Neanderthal man, which is a different message uh, that I, I, I thought of doing today, but because uh, actually that uh, human evolution is the number one reason that people accept evolution. So you, you want to take out human evolution at the root, that takes down the whole tree. And Neanderthal man shows features that we would show if we lived three or four hundred years. Well, wouldn't you know that about the time of the flood, they lived about three or four hundred years, you know, shortly after the first generation or two after the flood. That's what Neanderthal man was, was the first few generations after the flood. It wasn't some caveman. Neanderthal man made makeup. They made aspirin. Can you make aspirin? They made penicillin. They had houses, uh, and perhaps roads, uh, maybe, maybe vehicles, you know, but, you know, who knows. Uh, so they had all kind of uh, advances. Uh, they made glue. Uh, as good as today's super glue that has to be oxygen deprived. They have to make it and bury it in the ground and, and leave it there for such a certain amount of time and so it'll become a super glue. So they had the technology to do all these things. I bet none of us can do that stuff. Neanderthal man smarter than we are. And they try and make him look like an ancient, you know, some caveman, stupid caveman. No, he's not. He was just a human being that lived several hundred years. All right. So. Dinosaurs are just big animals. They, they probably grew bigger, lived longer. A, a lot of lizards today grow their entire lives. But they only live 15 years, maybe. Now, can you imagine if you know, a lizard gets this big in 15 years, how big would he get in 200 years? Right. Pretty big. Iguanas, they can get 6 to 10 feet long. And they only you know, live 15 years or so. Imagine if they lived 200 years. He'd be, he'd be dinosaur size. So there are different kind of lizards most, for the most part, but it's just it's the same principle. So, and this is a really good quote because this, this, this guy is a militant atheist, hostile evolutionist, but his quote is right on, and I want to read it. Um, he says, oh, but of course, the story of Adam and Eve were, was only ever symbolic, wasn't it? Symbolic? So Jesus had himself tortured and executed for a symbolic sin by a non-existent individual. Nobody not brought up in the faith could reach any other verdict other than barking mad. I think he's spot on there. Because if you believe the Bible, you need to believe it. How can you believe John 1 through 3 or Romans 1 through 3 are true if you don't believe Genesis 1 through 3 are true? Did God lie to you for the first several chapters? Then he started telling you the truth? He's telling you myths and fairy tales and stories? Then he tells you the truth. No. Either it's true or it's not true. Right. And my, 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 my uh, mission is to prove that it's true. Amen. So, next. The, the fir probably the first noted that there's actually been several, uh, going back as much as 200 years now, uh, that they found soft tissue in dinosaur bones. But the first one that became publicized was found by Mary Schweitzer uh, 
they were they cut a T-Rex bone in half for ship to ship it from one museum to another because it was too long to fit in a, a, a normal crate. They thought, well, if they cut it in half, put it in a standard crate, save them a lot of money. And when she cut it in half, they realized this isn't solid solid bone. It's not solid solid rock yet. And so she did testing on it. And she uh, she works for a guy named Dinosaur Jack Horner. He used to have a TV show back back when we were some of us were, were younger, and. He was kind of the Bill Nye, the science guy of his day. And so, and he's still pretty famous amongst people in the industry or you know, that, that field. But uh, she, she tested it over two dozen times because she knew nobody would believe it. And she found soft tissues that scientists know could not last millions of years, could not last many thousands of years, sometimes not even many hundreds of years. So if they find these things inside dinosaur bones, that's telling you that dinosaur bone was not millions of years old. And they found some incredible stuff. And I'll have to, a lot of times we try and set things up so I can <coughs> advance the slides myself. Some, some, some of these prehistoric churches don't have the technology to do that, so we ha I have to point at the guy and, you know, I got a whole bunch of slides, so and, and he's never seen the message, so we'll, we'll, we'll just wing it the best we can. And there's just another picture of it, so go ahead. And some of these will go by fast. Pictures that she found collagen, she found blood vessels, she found blood cells. Now, you leave some blood out, it's not going to last for millions of years. It, you, know, you know, leave a steak out. All right, it's going to rot, it's going to decay, it's going to, after a while, you don't want it in your house. All right, uh, it's not going to last millions of years and turn it into a rock. So, but that's what, they're, that's what she found in these things. All right, go ahead. And here's what some of the scientists said to her. After she ran the test more than two dozen times, because she knew they wouldn't believe her, and I mean, she actually called Jack Horner, and, and he didn't believe her at first. He thought she was saying they just looked like these things. She says, uh, uh, no, Jack, these are, these are real, and they're both playing hot potato. You found the dinosaur. Well, you found the soft tissue in it. I mean, it was kind of comical reading there reading their uh, comments back and forth. But this one right here, <coughs> several different comments by different scientists that she talked to uh, that told her, oh, this isn't possible, it can't be, we, it doesn't fit our science and all that. And uh, she says, I, I had one reviewer tell me that he didn't care what the data said. He knew that what I was finding wasn't possible. Well, apparently it was. She found it yeah. 25 times. <laughs> she found it. And I wrote back and said, well, what data would convince you? And he said, none. That's a scientist, at least supposedly. They try and make the issue is religion against science. Well, they're right. They're the religious ones. We're the ones that believe the science. You, you, I mean, you see his, his quote right there. He don't, he don't care what the facts are. He doesn't care what the truth is. He doesn't care what the science shows, what the experiments show. He will not believe it because it, it goes against his religion of evolutionism. All right? And so same thing, blood cells, they, they, they can't possibly, they can't reasonably be, be denied as being in there and being much younger than scientists say dinosaurs should be. And just some more pictures. Go ahead. Well, I think I might be getting to that later. They, I, they, 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 they're trying to clone a, ma a woolly mammoth, and they probably can uh, eventually, at least in theory, because we have elephants that could be used as a surrogate to, to carry, carry the thing, and they probably, one of these days, will get one. We don't have dinosaurs around. You have to have a, some kind of creature that could be a surrogate mother and, and care to clone, and, and so they might not be able to have success with dinosaurs. Um, I don't know if there's, there might be some kind of lizards that might work, but they don't know. There's, you know, the, and, uh, you know, they, of course, they believe dinosaurs evolved into birds. Well, they, they can try all the chickens and turkeys they want. They're not going to give birth to a T-Rex. So <laughs> that, that won't work either. All right. Keep going. So they said, well, no, these aren't blood vessels. They're, they're slime. They call it biofilm. And you see some of the pictures. But the only problem is uh, there's no cellular detail, uh, no nuclei, no nucleuses, no philopods, that's like their feet or hands or whatever you want to call them. Uh, 
it's it's a different kind of collagen uh, uh, from from the two different things. It, was, uh, it doesn't have a thing called EPS, which is what creates the biofilm. So it's not biofilm. It's 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 blood. It's blood cells. It's blood vessels. Right. And even biofilm would not last a hundred million years if that's what it was. So that's not an answer anyway. And. Then their, their biggest, uh, they said, well, it, it, if we put it, they did some experiments, a uh, two-year experiment, but it was a controlled experiment in a laboratory, in a climate control thing with filters, all kind of, some of those will be coming up. And they said, well, if we put it in a mixture of iron and hydroxyl, it could last, you know, two years according to our experiment. All right, two years doesn't tell you anything about 100 million years, all right? Do it for 20 years, you might, and that's still not even close to 20 million, 100 million. Uh, so two, a two year, you know, we, we know iron is a real good preservative. Anybody that's got a, got a vehicle, a, a car, ours has got plenty of rust on it, painted over most of it. So, so you know iron's not good, for, it doesn't preserve many things. And dinosaurs, when they die, they probably don't go looking, I'm going to die in 10 minutes. I got to find myself an iron hydroxyl pool to die in so I'm preserved for 100 million years. No, dinosaurs don't know that, and so that's just, and like I said, climate controlled, keep it in a certain temperature, sterile lab conditions. Yeah, I'm sure that's what when dinosaurs died, they all looked for. We got to find a place that's 65 degrees and uh, is sterile, uh, so I can die and be preserved. Go ahead. Uh, they used filters. Uh, yeah, again, the dinosaur says we got to find something to be a filter when I die. So uh, you know, see how preposterous it gets after a while. They spin them in a centrifuge because it prevents coagulation. I used to work in a slaughterhouse, so I know blood, even large amounts of blood, coagulates pretty rapidly. And they, you know, so that kept messing up their experiments and all that, so they, they spun it in a centrifuge, which, you know what that would do? That would replicate uh, to a good degree the actions of the flood. So they're trying to replicate the flood to prove the flood's not real? <laughs> Science. <laughs> okay, go ahead. And yeah, iron gets gets out by destroying the red blood cells, so it it, it doesn't work. Uh, it, it can't be preserved in iron because the iron would destroy it, not preserve it. And these are some of these will go by. Oh, these uh, then they try and say, well, they were preserved in clay. Clay can preserve it longer than the dirt. Well. I mean, they're, they're first of all, isn't that admitting the other one wasn't a good enough answer if they got to come up with a backup answer? Yeah, so they, they know that. Go ahead. And uh, where there's, okay, uh, Kevin Anderson and Ted Seek are two, two creation scientists that I know. Well, Ted Anderson, I mean, Kevin Anderson uh, died just a year or two ago. And, uh, but they, uh, what Ted Seek says was uh, where there is water and oxygen, and so on, all these abbreviations, acids, bases, oxidizing agents. He says, the de de degradation of organic substances cannot be averted. He says the clay ain't going to stop it anyway. And then uh, Kevin Anderson noted that most of the tissue-bearing fossils are found in mudstone or sandstone, not in clay anyway. Like I said, the dinosaurs didn't look around. I got to find some clay uh, that, and with, that's got some iron and hydroxyl and filters and, and uh, it's been spun in a centrifuge. Uh, so. And uh, Hell Creek was where a lot of these bones are found. It's a big, millions and millions and millions of dinosaur bones all mixed together in the same place out, out, out west. And, and so we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that a little more later. Atsi the Iceman was uh, found uh, frozen in uh, 1991. He has to be kept in a temperature controlled environment at all times or he'll decay. But they're going to tell us dinosaur bones out in the dirt could survive 200 million or 100 million years without decaying or being able to find soft tissues in it, not going to happen. But the pro pr another problem was they, uh, go ahead, we'll, we'll back to the one we just were, uh, the, the one on the bottom, they did some, uh, w as our technology advanced, they thought they could go back and identify the, the dead soldiers from World War I and reunite them with their, their country of origin or their family or whatever. And, and, and this was like 90 years after World War I, they, did, they, they started doing these testing and they got almost no results. They said they decayed too much in 90 years. Right. 90. But the dinosaurs survived for 100 million? 
I don't think so. Something doesn't add up there. Okay, now back to the next one. You guys, you might want to look up on the internet one of these days and listen, listen to this yourself. Uh, uh, Bob Enyard, who, uh, he just died not too long ago, a year ago maybe, uh, he, he called up Jack Horner and offered him $10,000 plus expenses to have those dinosaur bones with soft tissues carbon dated. Now carbon has a relatively short half-life, means it, it decays really fast. So they don't even use it to date dinosaur bones because they think dinosaur bones are millions of years old. Car uh, carbon, uh, carbon decay can only date things within a few thousand years, maybe a few tens of thousands of years if you, you know, give them the benefit of the doubt. So they, you know, they don't even use, so if you used car the carbon dating and you found it in the dinosaur bone, that proves that dinosaur bone is much younger than evolution says. It's only thousands of years, not millions. So he called them up. Whoops, I'm, I'm making motions and he's flipping the slides. Oh, sorry. That's, that's what happens when you do things live. Well, <laughs> anyway, he, he calls... The <laughs> He calls Jack Horner and offers him $10,000, but Jack Horner says, no, 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 I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do it. No, why not? If he, if he knows no carbon is gonna be found in a dinosaur bone, you think he would want it tested to prove, and the guy even said, why don't you do, you know, you'll prove all these silly creationists wrong, won't you? Oh, no, I'd be giving evidence to the creationists. I don't wanna do that. What do you mean it'd be giving evidence? You, it, it should be the other way around, but, so finally at the end of the, End of the discussion, he says, I'll tell you what, I'll give you $20,000 and pay all the expenses if you let us carbon date one of your dinosaur bones. No, no, won't do it, won't do it. That tells me two things. One, our college professors, at least the ones at the upper levels, are paid way too much money if they could turn down $20,000. I got bones in there. You want, give me $20,000 for them? Sold. <laughs> okay, all right, I can get more. Actually, it'd be harder to get more because I got mine from Joe Taylor. He died. La he, yeah, he did die last year. As a matter of fact, he died on a Sunday between two. I was at a church, and between my two sermons, he died. So I pulled out some of his things and used them for the evening service. <coughs> and so anyway, and and it tells not that they're making really good money. At least those guys are, and and they're scared to death to, to have their their religious faith put to the test right, yeah. because they know it'll fail. Okay, now I now advance. Here's uh, the first list they put together. There's about 40-something uh, that they looked at throughout history and found where people had found soft tissues in dinosaur bones. Collagen and proteins and, and blood cells and different things like that. And they would either be, well, we, we don't control the media. The, lib the left controls the media, so they don't let it out. Or they were put, published in obscure scientific things that three people in the country that are pursuing that particular degree might, might read that nobody else in the world would ever read. So they were hidden from the public. Some of these things go back 100, 200 years. And if you, you know, you know, so now they're looking them up. And now they're finding, there's an updated chart that's at least twice as, as long as that now of things they found. And uh, this one scientist says that uh, most researchers agree that claims for the preservation uh, of DNA beyond a few tens of thousands of years cannot be substantiated. Dinosaur DNA will never be found. Whoops, they found dinosaur DNA. <laughs> so much for that scientist. See, they didn't believe it was possible, but it is. They're finding it, and they found all these other things, the collagen, the proteins, the osteocytes, blood cells, histone, different things, blood, blood vessels, blood cells. They're finding all these things in now hundreds of, diff of dinosaur bones. They, in amber, uh, they, they, they found 135-year-old uh, 130, amber. They, they're finding things in that, that soft tissue that shouldn't be, the, that they say is 135 million. It's not. It's back from the flood is what, what it is. And when you, they did some testing on uh, giant moas to find out the half-life of, of DNA. And uh, half-life is, uh, in, in so, this many, so many years, half of it decays. In that same amount of years, that half decays. And it goes half and half and half. Eventually, it's gone. There's a thing called the rule of six. It's a rule because some things do go further, some things decay faster. 
but usually about six halves and it's gone. It'd be like shooting arrow at a tree. Uh, theoretically, you could say it goes halfway, it goes halfway, it goes halfway. Eventually, it's in the tree and you know, it, it's there. Same thing, the, the decays halfway and halfway and halfway and it's gone. And they cheated uh, by changing the pH value to make, so make it last longer. And it still only had a half-life of 521 years. So if you count the rule of six, what's that, 3,000 years? That dates you somewhere toward the flood. Yeah, so that's not bad. That's fairly accurate. Uh, although that, ac go ahead, was, was much higher than they thought. They, they actually, previous experiments showed it decayed faster. So that was the best experiment they ever did, and it still comes way, 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 way short. I, I looked up a bunch of quotes, and I'm glad I did, because they're probably scrubbing them off the internet, because I've seen several, several examples since where the scientists say, we never said that. We never said these things only lasted thousands of years. We've always believed they lasted millions of years. Well, I'm not quoting to any of these. They all say they, they only, only last thousands of years, thousands of years, 10,000 years, 10,000 years, 10,000, 20,000, 50,000. None of them say millions and millions. They all said thousands back then because that's what they believed, that's what the science shows, that they can only last thousands of years at most. And so go ahead. So we, so we know that you know, they can't lie and get away with it now. They found unfossilized dinosaur skin. Uh, uh, Mauricio Barbie, he was the scientist, uh, was checking out some dinosaur skin and realized some of this was coming loose and it, it's not even fossilized. I used to have a, a bearded dragon, a lizard, and he shed a couple times a year. And it's skin, it's a wispy stuff. It, it, it would disintegrate in no time. It ain't gonna last millions of years. But he found actual skin. It wasn't even hardened rock fossil yet. That was supposedly from a dinosaur that, de that it went extinct 70 million years ago. <coughs> Sorry, it, it didn't. And uh, he, he even said, well, uh, it, perhaps the greatest question Barbie is trying to answer is how the fossil remained intact for 70 million years. No, Dr. Barbie, it didn't remain intact. It's, you're, he's looking at the songbook. The songbook has to be 65 million years old. I don't care if it says 1939 in here. That's what they're doing. They found liquid mammoth blood, and that's why I, was, I thought this was coming. And like I said, in, in theory, they probably could, will be ev eventually able to clone a mammoth. They haven't had any success yet. They've tried it several times, but it's typical science. You got a trial and error. And uh, I, I, in theory, I think they probably could clone a mammoth using an elephant as, as the surrogate. And they, one of these days, they will. Now, the only way I think they could clone a dinosaur is if there really are some dinosaurs hiding in the swamps of Africa. And there are some swamps in Africa that are bigger than half the states in the, in the Union, bigger, you know, so bigger than an average state, bigger than a mid, uh, well, this is, in, yeah, so about, what's Indiana, about 65,000 square miles, I think, I, if I remember right, I got a, I don't know if it's on this message, another message I got the chart of all the Midwest states, they're all similar, 50, 60, somewhere in that neighborhood. And that's about, the Lickawalla Swamp alone is 55,000. So it's as big as a Midwestern state. Michigan, Wisconsin, Indiana, Ohio, you know, any of those states. Minnesota, some are a little bigger, some a little smaller, but okay, that have never been explored. Nobody lives in them, people live on the outskirts. So there's something as big as the state of Indiana that who knows what's in there, it's all jungle. They have found a few things. They found a, a trionics turtle that uh, in uh, the rest of the world, it, it gets about 18 inches. They found them in, from that swamp six feet. So well, if you get a turtle that got that big, maybe there are some big lizards or some dinosaurs still hiding in those swamps. And that, that's the, the biggest swamp. There's two other swamps that are about half the size, which is still a lot of space. And you know, you, if you hear reports, by the time you look, they could be miles the other direction. Uh, and you know, like it's all jungle. I wonder if, if, if the scientists might know there are some dinosaurs and they'll happen to discover, look, look what we found, just when they want to clone a dinosaur. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. I don't know that, but that, that wouldn't, wouldn't shock me. They found fossilized mosquito blood uh, that was only, only dated at 46 million years ago. Now, this is, that was a theme behind Jurassic Park. They get the blood from the mosquito that bit the dinosaur because you'll have the DNA. Now, 46 million doesn't get as far as what they, the dinosaurs went extinct 65 million years ago, they think. 
but it's at least getting closer. So there is, it becomes more viable that, hey, maybe they, this could happen. Right? And matter of fact, they uh, did find um, this one's 100 million years old. So some, some different uh, things. Okay, next one, I thought there was, uh, that wasn't what I thought, maybe I got a slide missing. Uh, they found some things that, that did have potential dinosaur blood in insects and things that were 100 million years old or, 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 or old enough to be in dinosaur era. This is a 110 million year old nodosaur. It's kind of related to a T-Rex. The thing is, it's not a fossil, it's a mummy. It's not fossilized. There might be parts of it that are partially fossilized, but most of it, it's a mummy. And it was found in Alberta, Canada uh, back in 2011. Next. And there's just some more, okay, next, same thing, just more pictures of it. Uh, Caleb Brown from the uh, Tororo Museum, Museum postdoctorate researcher, he said, we don't just have a skeleton, we have a dinosaur as it would have been. Next. Then we got Jacob Venter, who one of these days I may meet because uh, University of Bristol is real close to uh, Bath, England, or in England, and the, the church, uh, well, actually the church in Bristol too, they've inv invited me over, we're trying to work it out someday <laughs> to, to get me over there and uh, do some creation lessons over because the uh, guy from Bath uh, is the guy that put, put a bu puts a bunch of my videos on the, look up uh, Bath Bible Institute, and he's got like 25 of my videos on there. Uh, uh, his name's Jason, and uh, they, they run a Bible institute there, and Brother uh, uh, Pete Dickens is a missionary. I think he's in Bristol, and they work together a lot because they're in fairly nearby. And so they wanted, they wanted to get me to see if they could get me in to speak at the University of Bristol. So I might get to meet this guy. That would be cool. But he says this dinosaur is so well preserved that it might have been walking around a couple of weeks ago. Now, these are evolutionists. But they at least saw the evidence, and these guys are a little more honest, and they say, yeah, this is, this is not millions of years old. There's something doesn't seem right. Something, this thing could have been walking the streets a couple weeks ago. Okay, and there's Joe Taylor and Mark Armitage. Oh, we got 10 more. What time was I supposed to get done? Noon? <laughs> I'm, I'm getting near the end, but we still got some pretty interesting stuff. Because uh, uh, these guys have been finding this stuff all along. Jo uh, Joe Taylor, Mark Armitage. Mark and Joe Taylor r ran the Mount Blanco Fossil Museum. When I did a lot of my fossil <coughs> Mark Armitage used to work at uh, one of the University of California. I don't remember which city, Santa Barbara, or one of those. He, he's, on their equipment, he found soft tissue in dinosaur bones. And Strangely enough, once he found them and published them and using their equipment, they had to admit he did it right. Everything was per perfect. Everything. He's a, uh, a microscopist, one of the best in the world. They admitted he, everything was right and what he found was, was factual and true. Found soft tissue in the dinosaur bones and they fired them. Right. They didn't want any more of that. Right. Well, but they said they fired them. You know, they, they made up some reason they fired them, even though all these years they've been giving them awards and accolades and, you know, these. You know, one of the world's best, uh, you know, microscopists, and you know they're bragging on him, and all of a sudden they fire him. He took him to court. I don't know. He, he, he was not allowed to divulge how much he won. If he won, by the way, Amen. but he won enough that he bought every piece of equipment <laughs> that he was using at their university for his own lab. So he won a pretty penny, several hundred thousand dollars at least, maybe maybe over a million. Uh, so that's pretty good when a court, courtroom decides that the creationist is right and awards him hundreds of thousands, you know he's right. Amen. And they've been finding these things and saying, yeah, they're, they're soft tissue, they can't be millions of years old, uh, they weren't fossilized, and on and on. Okay, next. And we'll, we'll, I think some of these will go through fast. These are just some of the pictures that they found over the years of, of soft tissue, so a lot of these will go by quick. Right? Your mic died. My mic died? Uh oh. Uh, or I'll just have to talk louder. <laughs> we should do our song now. <laughs> that way nobody, I don't want that going on the live stream. There's still a mic live behind you, but So are we on pause right now or something? I guess. You are live, but silent. I'm live, but silent. Yes. 
Okay, I can hear buzzing. Oh, I can hear too much buzzing. Hope that goes away. <laughs> when I hear ringing in my ears, I didn't hear my own voice. All right, so here's just more pictures. These are the ones that the Mark Armitage took with the university equipment that they had to let them publish it because it was done on their, on their nickel, you know, and uh, they had to admit it was all right. This was back in uh, 2014. I'll go ahead next. And he's been finding more and more in different, you know, since he's put up his own lab, and that's, this is from a, a, a nano a nano tyrannus raptor, it's called. Again, they're, they're very similar to T-Rex. Maybe they're juvenile T-Rexes, actually. Go ahead. And there's some, he's had it published in some uh, secular publications uh, that, they, you know, he, he, he puts out the information. They have to admit it's true, it's real. What he's finding is there. They can't deny it, so they publish it to some degree. Sometimes they censor their own stuff. We'll be seeing that coming up soon. Uh, this is, uh, well, that's Carl Baugh on, on, on the end and the technician on the other end and Carl Kirby in the middle. There's my bone. I have that one with me in the car somewhere, but it would take about an hour to dig it out, the Triceratops backbone. He bought his, well, he, he got it from Carl Baugh, and Carl Baugh is right near Joe Taylor down in Texas. And so Carl gets all his stuff from Joe Taylor. So I'm saying he got his stuff from the same place I got my stuff. So there's a very good chance that my bones have these kind of things in them as well. Like I said, if NBA wants to give me $20,000 to have them tested, you, you, ten, I'll take $10,000. Right? I'll take $5,000, all right? Uh, that's fine, all right? Okay, so, so, this, so basically the same bones I bought have already been tested, or at least from, from the same place, the same dinosaur, and proven to have soft tissue in them. <coughs> so I'll go ahead. And here's just pictures of what they found, a blood clot and collagen that they found inside, inside his bones. And probably they'd find stuff like that inside mine too, if anybody wants to give me $5,000. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Then comes maybe the highlight of all. This is the most spectacular thing of all. Inside of these dinosaur bones, Mark Armitage found these things. And what you're looking at there, these two pictures, next slide, are living worms. They're called nematodes. They live their whole lives inside the dinosaur bones. There's enough in a dinosaur bone that, that we, looks like rock to us that can sustain them where they can live, they can reproduce, they, you know, they, they can have generation after generation after generation. They never get out of the bone. They're trapped in there. But yet he found they're not, they don't live millions of years. So those bones can't, and, and million, over millions of years, you would think they would eat any possible nutrient in the bone. But yet they're finding them, he found them they're there today. They're alive. He found these, those uh, last October. So, so, you know, a year ago. And so they're able to eat, to grow, and to reproduce from inside a dinosaur bone. Them bones are not 65 million years old. No way, no how. Next, and I think we're right near the end. Oh, I do got a few more things. They took some, uh, two different times that we've had dinosaur bones dated by secular labs. And it, it, uh, you can read the list of the people that did it, and I know most of those people, and uh, uh, the list of the uh, different dinosaurs and how many bones and all that. We're not going to, but of course they should have no carbon because the carbon has a short half life of only you know a little over five thousand years, so they can't possibly be millions of years old. Should have no carbon because dinosaurs were extinct sixty-five million years ago, but they were all dated as next tens of thousands of years old. Okay. So we, that's what we would expect. Here's just a list of them. Go ahead, go ahead. That's just, I, I was going to work. Next, it was just a there's a list of the scientific, here uh, just the letters that the lab sent saying yes, this is what, how, it, this all happened. Geochron Labs, Elbricks uh, from Kiel, uh, Kiel, Germany, a couple different universities up there, Georgia and Arizona. All right, go ahead. Um, here we go, the, uh, I probably can't read that from that far away, so I'll have to turn around again. Uh, he wrote, he wrote Hugh Miller, uh, the guy from uh, University of Georgia, and said, Dear Dr. Miller, I have recently become aware of the work that you and your team have uh, been conducting with respect to radiocarbon dating of bone. The scientists at CAIS and I are dismayed uh, by the claims that you and your team have made with respect to the age of the earth and the validity of biological evolution. Notice he didn't say they made any claims that were wrong, unfactual, untrue. He just said they're dismayed by him. Well, I bet they are. 
He says, consequently, we are no longer able to provide radiocarbon services in support of your anti-scientific agenda. Why not? Shouldn't their services prove they're true, that they're right? No, they prove we're right. That's why they don't want them to do it. So I've instructed the radiocarbon laboratory to return your samples and not accept any further samples for analysis. Now again, which one's the scientist and which one's the religion and religion wacko <laughs> who's holding on to his religion no matter what the facts say? He don't care what the facts say. You know, we're the scientists, they're the religious freaks. All right, next. Then this uh, Asian group here put out the material, they, they, they read the experiments, uh, printed the stuff out, uh, distributed it at a big meeting they had. Once they realized the implications, they actually went out and re recovered their own stuff and as best they could censored their own report. Blacked it out, ripped pages out. I mean, there co some copies got out, but uh, they censored their own report. That's how bad they don't want people to, to believe in creation. They would censor their own report, make themselves look like fools. <laughs> okay, if that's what they want to do, next. So we got to try it again. Some of the same people involved, uh, uh, just in 2015, sent them a bunch of dinosaur bones, a bunch of other bones that we knew how old they were that would guarantee that they're giving us accurate results. And they did, because all the bones, they sent bones from fish and trees or different things, uh, vegetables, wood. And they all came back as expected, so then the dinosaur. See, if they tell you, if, if you tell them it's a dinosaur bone, they won't date it that way. They'll use a date, different dating method that'll give them long, you know, ages that they're looking for. Instead of doing it, you just give them a bone. Say, I don't know, I found this in my backyard. We're digging it up. Do your science. Tell me what it is. How old is it? If, if that's, what, that's what science is for, right? Uh, okay, so this, that's how, what they did. They gave them a bunch of bones. We don't know what they are. You know, they, they knew. Uh, but uh, they just gave them the bones that says, do your science and tell us how old they are. And all were dated, <laughs> you guys know what's coming next, is only tens of thousands of years, according to their dating. So now they will not date anybody's dinosaur bones anymore because they know what's going to happen. All right, next. Um, Les Zerbe, a missionary of ours years ago, uh, we, support, we support him. Uh, he was a missionary in Canada, now he's in Central America, but he found uh, frozen dinosaur bones in a glacier. And they were there for years and years. They couldn't do nothing about it. Uh, finally, uh, 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 Buddy Davis from Answers in Genesis uh, gathered a team and they went up there and recovered them. He wrote a book about it. It's actually a fa they should make a movie. It's a fascinating book. They had to f f fend off di uh, animals and, and uh, different elements and uh, bugs, mosquitoes all over the place. Uh, they, it was kind of fascinating. The canoe tipped over and they lost some of their bones and they got some back and went back and got all kind of stuff. But uh, <coughs> they, they found out they were not uh, fossilized, they were frozen. Now, freezing does preserve things for a while, but it still has limits. You can put a steak in the freezer, but if you go out five years later, ten years later, it's still no good. You know, you get freezer burn and it'll get worse and worse from there. And uh, so, in a hundred million years, it's, it's going to be a mess. Uh, but here they found intact dinosaur bones. At the time, they didn't have the technology to, to, to find some of the things they're finding. But since then, um, they have found un, unpermineralized bones. That means soft tissues. It means not, not fossilized. They were not fossilized in the, in, in the bones that he found. And I know the guy. I've met the guy. He's a missionary that our church supports. Go ahead. Um, they, they took a part of Mosasaur in a museum in, uh, I think it was L.A., to clean it, found pieces of heart, soft tissue, pieces of, uh, of the eye, uh, different things like that. When they, you know, so real soft tissue that can't last millions of years. Go ahead. Uh, Atarborosaurus, uh, these, they found soft tissue in these, uh, 1922, 1998, and 66, 78, and 95 by a... So we got a Polish team, an Italian team, and uh, Roy Andrews. You can look these things up on the internet and find out that. So this, I mean, 1922. That's that's a, that's a hundred years ago. They found soft tissues, but it you know it just didn't get publicized. Go ahead. Here's R. L. Moody found red blood cells in dinosaur bone in Wyoming in 1920. Again, a hundred million years ago, but it was published in the University of Illinois Press. Paleopathology: An Introduction to the Study of Ancient Evidences of Disease. Whoever would read that except some, some scientist trying to get his degree in that field or a doctor studying that field. So nobody knew about it. 
you know, a dozen people in the country might have read that somewhere, right? Go ahead. Uh, Charles Sternberg found a, a, a mummy that just looked very similar to the one we looked, we looked at earlier uh, uh, with uh, skin attached to the bones in 1908. Okay, go ahead. Uh, Mary Anning uh, found ink from a fossil cuttlefish uh, uh, in 1833 that she just would add water and she could use it to draw, like it was almost fresh ink. Uh, she found lenses from an ichthyosaur, it's kind of like an ancient dolphin, uh, that were still good enough to be used as magnifiers. They still had, mag you know, you could use them as, as magnifiers, uh, suggesting that they were obviously unfossilized or they wouldn't, you couldn't mag use them as magnifiers anymore. In 1811, that's more than 200 years ago that they found these things preserved that shouldn't last that long. They can't possibly last millions of years. And so we've been finding these for 100 years, 200 years. Just they don't get a lot of publicity. And I've, I've got all the URLs. You can look them up on, uh, you know, yourself on, on that. So I think we're just about to the end. Yeah. Now, if I have told you earthly things, which is all the stuff we're looking at, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? Now, that's Jesus Christ speaking. He says, if you, can't, you, know, if I'm, if you don't believe the earthly things, how are you going to believe in heaven, hell, uh, the rapture, the second coming, uh, you know, the, the, the resurrection? These things are not scientific. See, we can believe a lot of things in the Bible that can be verified and proven and substantiated like we just have, but there's some things in the Bible you just have to believe by faith. The reason we can do that is because the Bible proves itself to be true in all those other areas. So if somebody tells you the truth a million times in a row, you're probably going to believe them next time. All right? Um, Jesus also said, for, had you believed Moses, who wrote Genesis and the first five books of the Bible, had you believed Moses, you would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if you believe not his writings, how should you believe my words? So if you don't believe Genesis, how are you going to believe John 3.16 and, and, and Romans uh, 6.23 and verses like that? How are you going to? It wouldn't make sense. Or if you do believe them, you're believing them with a... a you're going to be battling yourself. I believe some of the Bible. I don't believe some of the Bible. I believe some of the Bible. I don't believe some of the Bible. You might get saved. Uh, I, I guess it's possible, but you're going to be uh, confused. You're going to be battling with yourself uh, as far as whether you believe the Bible or not. And can you really trust those verses about salvation if you don't trust the other verses? All right. Next. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. Th that's... That's kind of the issue. They want to avoid the judgment. They don't want to face God because they know they're not going to fare very well. Well, they could just get saved. <laughs> you know, that would be easy enough, but they'd, they don't want to, so they pretend that like, there's no God or evolution is the explanation. Um, so then uh, Romans 14, 12, so then every one of us, that's each individual, shall give account of himself to God. Your pastor won't be there to help you. Your mom and dad won't be there to help you. I mean, they may be in heaven, but they're not going to be at your judgment. You have, you have to answer for yourself. Your parents won't be there. Your pastor won't be there. The pope won't be there. The priest won't be there. Uh, nobody. It's you and God. You better get things right between you and God. Amen. Not, not think, well, I, I grew up in a church, or, or my parents are Christians. My dad was a deacon. No, it's going to be between you and God, one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, the other stuff won't matter at that point. And, of course, the, uh, 2 Peter 3, they're scoffers walking after their own lusts. They willingly are ignorant. And, uh, boy, haven't we seen that, some of those scientific quotes. They are willingly ignorant. They know what's the truth. They know what the science shows. But they say, I'd, no data would convince me. No, I don't believe it, even though they know it's true. So they're willingly ignorant of, and the things that they're willingly are ignorant, by the word of God, the heavens were of old, so the, the, the creation. The world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished, the flood. So you got creation and the flood that they're willingly ignorant of. And that's what I'm trying to give reasons not to be ignorant of. All right, next. And I think this is the last slide. But there's a way out. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. It's that simple. God says... Here's your way. Believe on me. Believe on Jesus Christ, and, and all that stuff will be cut, taken care of. Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death. 
And there's two deaths in the Bible. First death, they bury you, put you in the ground. Second death, <coughs> you go to hell in the lake of fire and burn forever. That's the wages of sin. If that's where that verse ended, we'd all be in lots of trouble. Yes. And we're, we are in lots of trouble. But, that word but, if you ask me, is the most important word in the Bible. Right there. Because but, the gift of God, is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So you trust Jesus Christ, he gives you the gift of eternal life. And you don't have to, he says, I'll take, they're the way, our wages, they're the wages of sin. We earned it. We deserve it. We don't want it, though. We don't want those wages. Jesus says, I'll take them. I'll take those wages. And he died on the cross, and he paid the price, so you don't have to. So you have the choice. You can say, no, Jesus, never mind. I'll pay, I'll pay my own way. My church, my priest, my pastor, my pope, my good works, my baptism, my whatever. Uh, okay, you can. You've got the free will to do that. But that would be really stupid if you ask me. It would be a lot easier to just say, yes, Lord, I, I trust you. I believe you because you did it. You made it, and I can't. I, there's nothing. I'm, I'm not good enough to make it to heaven. I have to trust you. You do that, you're saved. All right, so I'm sure we'll hear more about that during the rest of the services. I guess I'm, I'm done with this. Do you want us to do our song now, or we can wait? Okay, well, then uh, close us in a word of prayer or however you want to.